All right, bear with me everyone. Before we jump to the actual video, I have to knock out a couple of things. Firstly, this video is brought to you by Thompson T. They have great sweatproof undershirts and they've hooked up the UE community specifically with a really hefty discount. The first link down below is to their website and I wear them myself so I can thoroughly recommend them. Second, people have been super into the Division merch that I was reopening from back in the day when the channel first started for limited runs, so why not keep that trend going since people are actually really receptive of it. Here is one of our original Rogue t-shirts. It's live right now. The link is down below in the description as well, so click that if you're interested in this Division t-shirt. But now on to the actual video. Today I want to compress all the actual info that is out there on Division 2 right now into one central source and also in a rapid fire format. I have specialized videos covering most of this up on the channel already for individual topics. They go way more in depth on any one thing like building, playstyle, or expectations, but this one will be a more broad kind of coverage and serve as a top down view of the whole picture. First off, Division 2 will significantly change the way that agents play. With the introduction of the armor bar and the well-known departure from instant healing, PvP especially will take a different shape and resemble a more strategic and tactical encounter rather than a spastic dance, but I have a whole video on that already, so I'll leave it at that. There has been a class system introduced which awards players with a special signature weapon and removes signature skills from the game. At this point, there is a demolitionist with a grenade launcher, a survivalist with an explosive crossbow, and a sniper with a 50 caliber rifle. All gear will now have a manufacturer brand associated with it, giving it unique bonuses in combinations up to three pieces. Also, gear sets will be present in some capacity, but it will not be in the same vein as previous Division 1 sets, you know, the ones that completely wrecked balance and were ridiculous. They will not be the same as that. They will have a different sort of feel to them, and they'll be on top of the brand sets. The end game for Division 2 has been completely redefined. There will be at least one 8 player raid present at launch and most likely more expanded upon in the future, which is a significant improvement over Division 1 incursions, which were just 4 player missions sort of. A lot of them were lackluster, they weren't very interesting. So raids is a really great thing to see and it is something that is vastly different from Division 1 to Division 2. The open world will take on a far more dynamic feeling as well. Washington DC, the game's new setting, will feature resource control points over which various NPC factions will fight for direct control. This will create events and other more flexible and persistent content which helps the world stay interesting post-max level, unlike the original game which left huge sections of an admittedly very beautiful map completely dead and players never traveled there. So this is a new format with more dynamic content, especially endgame and across the entire map, so that's a positive change. The Snowdrop engine has also been improved, now allowing curved terrain to be incorporated, more significantly think hills or trees or various natural landscapes, and it also looks a little bit better visually, if only slightly. There are six different known skills at the moment from the E3 demo, and instead of making an entire separate video on them to milk ad revenue, I'll just list them off for people with a very brief description. A lot of people have been asking about the Ballistic Shield, and we know from a specific gear talent it will be present again, so first skill is Ballistic Shield. The second skill is a chem launcher that will coat an area with incendiary gas or gel or incendiary stuff of some sort that you can shoot to detonate and it will hold various charges. So you could potentially coat a whole street with the stuff from a very large distance away and then light the entire world on fire with one bullet that sparks a chain reaction. And I think that's pretty cool. The chem launcher will also have some sort of repairing nanobots of some kind, but it is almost guaranteed to be a heal over time effect for you or your teammates and thus avoid the balancing PvP issues from the first game, but it does beg the question of whether or not a typical healer build, quote unquote, will be possible. From another talent in the game, we do know for a fact that the mini turret is coming back, as well as the seeker mine. That's another one that's making a reappearance. Though the seeker mine can be directed now and requires more player control specifically, instead of just a drop and forget skill where you press one button and then it does its thing. You're going to have across the board more control over Division 2 skills and how they function. There will be a personal assault drone which soaks up aggro and suppresses different enemies and with the flying drone we know for a fact that the air has some sort of traversable mesh so perhaps we will see other flying mechanics in the game, maybe for enemies, etc. And lastly there is a skill called the hive which throws a grenade like device that will fire off a series of smaller projectiles which seek out and hone in on enemy weak points and based on where you throw it it can detonate different parts of their body or different weak points in general uh, so the hive is a pretty cool new skill that was not present in Division 1. 
Also, the Assault Drone, like the Seeker Mine, will require you to do more than simply release it and let it function. Though you can do that, you'll be able to direct it to certain enemies or, you know, take control of it in a little bit more of an advanced capacity than the original game with turrets uh, or Seeker Mines, etc. We know from a developer interview that survival will also make a comeback, and in a better thought out way this time as well. The original survival was a downloadable piece of content with a price tag associated which fractured the player base and cut down on active participants. Also, it did not have random loot locations which crippled it from the get-go, but survival is almost certainly making a return in some form, though it might not be directly present from launch. The Dark Zone is 100% confirmed to be back and will allow The Division to maintain that aspect of its original innovative identity, even though a lot of other playstyle factors are changing. Love it or hate it, The Dark Zone is one of the most iconic things about The Division, and it's something that, if the sequel were to lack, would mean it's not really the same game. It shouldn't even be called a sequel, in my opinion. So I'm happy that it's back. Let me know how you feel about that, though, down in the comments below. I know some people don't even go in. They just play PvE, and they never stray into that dangerous area. I think it's fantastic though, and I'm glad it's coming back. For any who are interested, the beta signup is linked down below, and it has already reached record numbers, so click that link, it's clearly marked as beta signup link, and enter your info if you have not yet done so for a chance to test out the game earlier than launch. A huge feature has also been confirmed, and that is community and clan support, allowing groups to craft a unique tag and represent their clan, their squad, or their other group through official in-game methods. In light of that, considering Upper Echelon is arguably one of the largest and most thoroughly established division organizations out there, I welcome everyone to join our various communities, also linked below, which are the Facebook, the Discord, and a bunch of other things, but check that out down below, specifically for Division 2, but also a wide variety of other games. The revive system has also been reworked. In the original game, one could go down and get back up and be revived over and over and over many times, and certain talents even incentivize that by awarding bonus mitigation to both the downed and reviving agents. The sequel changes that significantly. The mechanic now functions so that once downed one time and then revived, the player will enter an unsafe state and any consecutive downs within a 30 second period will result in instant death. This will have a very large impact on both PvE and PvP. Some people are kind of missing that fact, but this is a very big change. NPCs, of course, have new archetypes, but there is an emphasis on an increased number of weak points, which do unique things when they're triggered, instead of just making the enemy stand still or dealing flat damage. Instead of enemies simply receiving damage or health buffs as well to raise their difficulty, they have improved tactics and target prioritization. All in all, it's a great change that opens up a ton of possibilities. Think about the difference between hunters in survival in the original game and regular Dark Zone NPCs. An increase to AI intelligence, tactical intelligence, is a huge deal. Weapon and gear mods are now universal. All agents will have a selection of options which are available all the time for any build, and that is all the different weapon mods that you can equip and all the different gear mods. You can pick and choose whenever you want. These will be used along with gear brands as the basic skeleton framework for builds, and I do have a video that is going far more in depth on that if you wanna check it out. I'll link it at the end of the video in the, the outro or whatever. But the concept will now be more akin to a puzzle, threading the needle to have the right amount of certain stats, both minimums and maximums to activate your chosen talents, which will then mostly augment your playstyle rather than simply being a boost to your damage. These changes help clean up the inventory and give all players a more balanced base pool of options to build up their character, rather than subjecting users to punishing RNG at all times for nearly every single thing that they require to advance their agent or their character. A lot of people may be concerned about a potential graphics downgrade, and that is not going to happen. The game may look a bit different on basic Xbox Ones or PlayStation 4s after release, but that's the difference between a top-level PC graphics card and the basic hardware that's in a console. But it has also been confirmed by top-level developers that there will not be a graphical downgrade as we saw with the original Division, or one that is severe as that. It's been touched on by many creators, but the original Division was showcased at E3 years before release and before before they had even built anything. It was all ambitious hypotheticals, and it was wrong to approach the marketing from that direction, and this time around, they already have the game. They are just in the process of tuning it and fully fleshing it out, so a graphical downgrade of that nature is not going to happen. It's also been confirmed that high-end weapons will have three talents, not just the one talent that was displayed in the E3 demo. Some players were concerned about that, so I thought I would throw that in here as well. 
Lastly, for rapid fire info, let's go over the brand sets. It's the same thing as the skills. I'm not going to make an entire separate video on this just to milk content because a lot of it is probably going to change, especially individual stats or more specifically their numbers. So covering it super in depth is pretty useless right now. You have the Overlord Armaments, which is basically just a set geared towards raw damage. There is the Petrov Defense Group, which is based around LMGs, turrets, and skill power. There is Providence Defense, which is a hybrid set between DPS, crit, and skill power. Sokolov Concern, which is your basic close-range SMG crit set. The Wyvern Wear, which seems to be a crit sniper set. China Light Industries, which is a shotgun and skill power set. Richter and Kaiser, which is a pistol ballistic shield set. And then the Eraldi, or however you say that, Holdings, which is yet another sniper set. That's all the brand sets that we know of, eight in total, which means a very large amount of three and three, or two, 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 or really any number of other combinations for the basic skeleton of a build. So that's a pretty exciting thing. All things considered, the game does have me pretty excited. It checks off a lot of boxes for me, but I'm a skeptic at heart, and I am not saying that people should pre-order. In fact, quite the opposite, there is simply not enough information right now to suggest that pre-ordering would be a worthwhile thing to do. It does look good, there's a lot of really cool things that I'm hearing, but once we know more, then you can start to consider it. I am not encouraging people to pre-order the exact opposite, hold off on that until we know more, until maybe the bait has happened, until we just have a lot more information to go on. I think that's critical. That's it for the video though, and until there is more to cover, and by more I mean information that allows meaningful content to be produced, not just mindless crap for views, I will probably slow down with the Division 2 news, since honestly most people know everything that there is to know right now, until the beta or another showcase, they at least know everything that's come out of E3. Again, we have these shirts up right now for a limited time for those who are interested, and in closing, I would like to thank Thompson T yet again for sponsoring the video, so thank you for that. There is a link down below for our community at large to their website, providing 25% off. Their sweatproof undershirts really do work. Their quality is fantastic. I personally wear them and can recommend them, so check them out if you or someone you know might be interested. And again, I appreciate them working with the channel to establish an ongoing relationship. As always, there are tons of links to our communities, and I do live stream on Twitch sometimes, so click on over and follow there if you want to, if you want to catch a live broadcast. Also, if you have Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch, and then sub for free to the Twitch channel through Twitch Prime, or you can just bookmark the shopping link at the very bottom of the description and use that anytime you surf Amazon. Both of those are free ways to support at no cost to you, but that's enough money talk for now. Thank you for watching the video, and have a nice night.